नमस्कार वॉम वेलकम टू वर्ल्ड न्यूज एंड इंडियन परस्पेक्टिव ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो दिस इज आर एस रघु एंड विद मी इज रेणुका ब्रिंगिंग ग्लिम्सेस ऑफ मेजर डेवलपमेंट्स ऑफ द डे फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द ग्लोब ओवर द नेक्स्ट हाफ एन आवर वी शैल ब्रिंग यू द लेटेस्ट फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स इकोनॉमी स्पोर्ट्स एंटरटेनमेंट एंड मोर दी हेडलाइंस Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to leave for United States on Wednesday expected to discuss radicalization terrorism and developments in Afghanistan during bilateral talks with President Joe Biden India and France review increasing bilateral collaboration in Indo-Pacific region stress on promoting stability and security in the region India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage crosses 82 crore landmark milestone National recovery rate stands at 97.75%. Air Canada resumes flight operations to India after long suspension due to COVID-19 pandemic. And in IPL cricket, Rajasthan Royals sets a victory target of 186 runs for Punjab Kings. As the nationwide free COVID-19 vaccination campaign at government facilities for those above 18 years is underway, we advise our young listeners to get vaccinated and help others get vaccinated. We also advise our listeners not to lower their guard as COVID-19 remains a threat to our health. Please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain 2 gaz ki duri for social distancing. focus on hand and face hygiene for any covid related information and guidance contact national helpline numbers 0112397846 and 1075 and now the news in detail indian prime minister narendra modi will leave for us on wednesday during the visit mr modi will meet us president joe biden in washington and will address the unga in new york Briefing media in New Delhi on Tuesday, Foreign Secretary Harshvardhan Shringla said, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and US President Joe Biden are expected to deliberate on ways to bolster bilateral ties in trade, investment and defense and security in their in-person talks in Washington. He said, the bilateral talks between Prime Minister Modi and US President Biden are expected to figure ways to deal with radicalization and terrorism besides major regional issues including developments in Afghanistan. Mr Modi will also meet US Vice President Kamala Harris. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday held a telephonic conversation with French President Emmanuel Macron. The two leaders discussed regional issues including recent developments in Afghanistan. In this context, they shared their concerns about possible spread of terrorism, narcotics, illicit weapons and human trafficking as well as the need to ensure human rights rights of women and minorities they reviewed the increasing bilateral collaboration in the indo-pacific region and the important role that the india france partnership plays in promoting stability and security in the region the leaders agreed to maintain close and regular consultations in the spirit of india france strategic partnership which both countries cherish deeply in a tweet mr modi said he spoke to french president on the situation in afghanistan He said both also discussed closer collaboration between India and France in the Indo-Pacific. The Prime Minister said India places great value on the strategic partnership with France including in the United Nations Security Council. Air Canada has resumed flight operations to India after long suspension due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Responding to a passenger's query on Twitter, Canada's largest airline confirmed the development. Air Canada operations to India are taking place under the bilateral air bubble agreement that India has signed with Canada and other 27 countries. Air Canada website said the passengers who plan to travel to Canada should carry an RT-PCR test that must be taken 18 hours before departure from testing center and lounge across from terminal 3 of the Indira Gandhi International Airport in Delhi. The International Monetary Fund IMF has put on hold funds to Afghanistan amid the rising uncertainty in the country. These developments came after the IMF recently announced a 650 billion US dollar special drawing rights SDR allocation for member countries, but Afghanistan at the moment will not be allowed to access these funds. 
Earlier, IMF spokesperson Gary Rai said at a press conference that Afghanistan will not have access to this grant because of the uncertainty over Afghanistan's government. As a result, the IMF program there has been put on hold. Mr. Rice also said that IMF is deeply concerned about the difficult economic and humanitarian situation in Afghanistan. Moreover, the International Monetary Fund and World Bank have also stopped loans and the Financial Action Task Force warned its 39 member nations to block Taliban assets. In Yemen's central province of Marib, 35 Houthi rebels were killed on Monday when Saudi-led airstrikes hit Houthi reinforcement, a Yemeni government military source said. Meanwhile, the Houthi-run Al Masira TV reported 23 Saudi-led coalition airstrikes on Sirwa without providing further details. Sirwa is the main front line between the rebels and the Yemeni army in Mareb. The government of Bangladesh has given permission to 52 trading organizations to export Hilsa fish to India on the occasion of the Durga Puja. The Ministry of Commerce, in a circular issued on Monday, allowed each organization to export a maximum of 40 tons of Hilsa to India. The permission will remain effective till October the 10th. The companies will have to comply with the export guidelines of the country and pass through a rigorous testing process for exporting Hilsa to India. The government of Bangladesh has been giving special permission for export of Hilsa to India since the last few years as a token of friendship though the export of Hilsa was banned in the country in the year 2012. In a landmark achievement, India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage has crossed 82 crore landmark milestone on Tuesday. Till now, more than 82 crore 57 lakh 80,000 vaccine doses have been administered to people. The Union Health Ministry said more than 68 lakh 26,000 vaccine doses were administered today. The recovery rate is currently at 97.75%, which is highest since March last year. As Prime Minister Narendra Modi will leave for U.S. on Wednesday, Foreign Secretary Harshvardhan Shringla on Tuesday briefed the media. In today's hot spot, hot spot section, we bring you key highlightings of the briefing. As you are aware, Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi will pay an official working visit to the United States of America from the 22nd to the 25th of September. This will be the Prime Minister's first visit abroad beyond the neighborhood since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. Prime Minister will be accompanied by a high-level delegation consisting of the External Affairs Minister, the National Security Advisor, senior officials, including myself. The main elements of the program are bilateral meetings with the U.S. leadership, participation in the Quad Leaders Summit, address at the U.N. General Assembly, and business interactions. One of the highlights of the visit is the Prime Minister's meeting with the U.S. President, President Joe Biden, in the White House. You are undoubtedly aware that this would be the Prime Minister's first in-person meeting with President Biden as President of the United States of America. The leaders have been in regular contact in recent months. It was in November that the Prime Minister called to congratulate President Biden in his electoral victory. Since then, they've spoken in February and April this year. The Prime Minister has also participated in three major conferences and summits with President Biden as a participant. These were the Quad Leaders Summit, which was virtually held in March this year, the Climate Leaders Summit. They also participated in the G7 Summit the Prime Minister attended virtually in Cornwall in the UK. The Prime Minister will participate in the COVID-19 Global Summit as well, hosted by President Biden tomorrow. At their bilateral meeting on the 24th of September, the Prime Minister and President Biden will review the robust and multifaceted India-US bilateral relationship. They will also discuss how the comprehensive strategic global partnership between our two countries can be enriched further. The two leaders are expected to discuss how to bolster bilateral trade and investment ties, strengthen defense and security collaboration, boost strategic clean energy partnership, explore new avenues in emerging technologies, including through R&D, innovation, and industry linkages. The bilateral meeting would also feature current regional security situation following recent developments in Afghanistan, our stakes as a neighbor and a long-standing and preferred development partner of the people of Afghanistan. In this context, 
we would undoubtedly discuss the need to stem radicalism, extremism, cross-border terrorism, and the dismantling of global terrorist networks. They will also discuss the reform of the multilateral system, including the UN Security Council, the Indian diaspora in the United States, which consists of about 4.2 million people, is a very important factor in the relationship. They play a major role and have been a pillar of support in strengthening the relationship. It is expected that the Prime Minister will highlight the importance of people-to-people -people ties between the two nations and the potential of enhancing these ties further, especially through higher education linkages and mobility. We appreciate the facilitation that has been provided by the United States in helping Indian students travel to the U.S. for the beginning of their term. The importance of smooth post-COVID travel, especially for students, is also an important factor and is expected to be discussed. Owing to the prevailing COVID situation in the U.S., the U.S. government has imposed a number of restrictions and limitations on gatherings. The program has been drawn up keeping these constraints and restrictions in mind. The Prime Minister's bilateral engagements include a meeting with Vice President Kamala Harris. This will be the Prime Minister's first formal interaction with the Vice President. It would be recalled that the Prime Minister and Vice President Harris spoke on the telephone in June this year. The Vice President had offered to prioritize India in making U.S. vaccines available in the wake of the COVID situation at that time in India. At their meeting at the White House, the Prime Minister and Vice President Harris are expected to exchange views on bilateral, regional, global issues of mutual interest. The Prime Minister would be having some business-level interactions with the objective of strengthening two-way trade and investments. The U.S. is a very large investor in India. There are a lot of companies that have not only invested significantly in India, but also have the potential to invest either in terms of new investments or expand their existing investments in India. In that context, the Prime Minister will have a few meetings with select uh, CEOs of leading U.S. companies. Now, on the Quad Summit, as I mentioned, this is the first time that there would be an in-person Quad Summit. This would be on the 24th of September, held at the White House. Prime Minister will join Prime Minister Morrison, Prime Minister Suga, and President Biden for the summit. As you recall, the Prime Minister had participated in the virtual Quad Summit in March, convened by President Biden. This was the first plurilateral engagement of President Biden. It signaled the priority that his administration accorded to the Quad, and it was also the first meeting of Quad leaders, albeit virtually. We see the Quad as a partnership among four like-minded countries in the pursuit of common interests in striving for a free, open and inclusive Indo-Pacific region. At the summit in March, the leaders had announced a broad array of initiatives, including on vaccines, infrastructure, emerging technologies and climate change. The four leaders will share views and perspectives on the regional situation and the emerging challenges, including in South Asia and the Indo-Pacific region, on how to work together to contain COVID-19, evolve a common approach to emerging technologies and means of addressing climate change. The leaders will take stock of progress made since the March summit, especially in the COVID-19 vaccine partnership. They will identify new areas of cooperation that will reinforce the positive and constructive agenda of the Quad, including contemporary areas that will benefit the Indo-Pacific region as a whole. As you know, the Quad has acquired momentum in the recent past and has been seen as a natural evolution and elevation to the apex level in view of the fact that the four countries share core attributes such as democracy, commitment to pluralism, market-based economic principles. They also have a shared vision of a free and open inclusive Indo-Pacific region to add prosperity to that as well and uh, with respect for international law. India's approach to the Indo-Pacific was enunciated by the Prime Minister in his speech at the Shangri-La Dialogue in 2018 when he also expounded on his vision of Sagar or security and growth for all in the region. On the conclusion of his program in Washington DC, the Prime Minister will travel to New York on the 24th of September evening, where he will go in for the third element of his visit at the UN General Assembly. On the 25th of September, Prime Minister will be the first head of uh, state or government to address the United Nations General Assembly at its 76th session. The theme for this year's general debate is, and I quote, building resilience through hope to recover from COVID-19, rebuild sustainability, respond to the needs of the planet, respect the rights of people, and revitalize the United Nations. India is currently a member of the UN Security Council. We held the presidency in the month of August, and we steered the council at a fairly challenging time. 
while addressing the UN General Assembly, the Prime Minister would dwell on the important issues, including the regional situation, cross-border terrorism, global efforts to combat COVID-19 and climate change, and the need to reform multilateral institutions. The fourth element of the Prime Minister's visit would be bilateral meetings with our close partners, Japan and Australia. The Prime Minister will meet the Australian Prime Minister, Scott Morrison. This is their first meeting in person in the post-pandemic period. The two leaders have maintained a regular dialogue. Just recently, we had our 2 plus 2 dialogue with the Foreign and Defence Ministers of Australia visiting India. And the two Prime Ministers are likely to discuss the gamut of India-Australia relations and I think anything that is of mutual interest to both our countries. The Prime Minister will also meet Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga, the Honourable Prime Minister of Japan. This will be their first in-person meeting and follows three telephone conversations they had recently. They will review progress in the close and multifaceted cooperation between India and Japan under the framework of the India-Japan Special Strategic and Global Partnership and discuss priorities for the future. The Prime Minister's visit with the Compact Program will bolster India's key strategic bilateral partnership with the United States and our close partners, Australia and Japan. It will also consolidate the Quad as a force for global good and will give the Prime Minister an opportunity to share his vision at the multilateral arena. From the US perspective, of course, I think when we look at the levels of support, we see a strong bipartisan support for a strong relationship with India and strong relationship that can strengthen the global efforts to further our common interests in that regard. We also have very strong trade and economic linkages. In the defense sector, we've had a number of exchanges. We are now preparing for exercise uh, Yudh Abhyas, which is the army level exercises. We are also participating in the Malabar naval exercise, which is underway in Guam, with the participation of Australia as well. The visit is also expected to provide momentum. In other words, would provide direction to some of the important bilateral mechanisms that we have, whether it's a trade policy group, whether it's a defense policy group or the trade policy forum, or a number of other mechanisms that are now ready to review that relationship in those areas. I think once the summit is over, we would have the opportunity to take them forward. Finally, let us summarize how we see the overall visit. India and the U.S. are both vibrant, mature democracies. We share common values, including the rule of law, equality, freedom, and pluralism. We are both free market economies with proactive shareholders in global issues, committed to global prosperity, peace, and security. The upcoming visit of the Prime Minister would not only enhance peace, depth and diversity of our bilateral relations, it would also give an opportunity to further strengthen comprehensive global strategic partnership on issues of mutual concern. In reply to a question, the Foreign Secretary said, the non-recognition of Covishield is a discriminating policy and impacts our citizens travelling to the UK. He said, the External Affairs Minister has raised the issue strongly with the new UK Foreign Secretary and assurances have been given that this issue will be resolved. The basic issue is that uh, here is a vaccine, Covishield, which is a licensed product of a UK company manufactured in India, which we have provided, supplied 5 million uh, doses to the UK at uh, the request of the government of the UK. We understand that this has been used in the national health system and therefore non-recognition of Covishield is a discriminatory policy and does impact on those of our citizens travelling to the UK. The External Affairs Minister, from what I understand, has raised this issue strongly with his counterpart, the new Foreign Secretary of the United Kingdom. I am told that uh, certain assurances have been given that this issue would be resolved and as you saw the minister has said that these issues should be resolved at the earliest possible to mutual satisfaction. Replying to another question on the recent security partnership among the US, Australia and the UK and its possible impact on Quad, Mr. Shrindla said the AUKUS and Quad are two groups and not similar in nature. Uh, the Quad is a plurilateral grouping, group countries that have shared vision of their attributes and uh, values. They also have a shared vision of uh, the Indo-Pacific region as a free, open, transparent, inclusive uh, region. The Quad has adopted positive, proactive agenda with a wide array of initiatives at the global level to address uh, some of the issues uh, of the day. This includes dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, including the supply of vaccines to the Indo-Pacific region, working on new and emerging technologies, 
working on issues like climate change, uh, infrastructure, maritime security, education, humanitarian assistance and disaster relief. There's a wide array of uh, initiatives that the Quad has undertaken, which is uh, designed to cater to the requirements of the Indo-Pacific region. On the other hand, AUKUS is a security alliance between three countries. We are not party to this alliance. From our perspective, this is neither relevant to the Quad, nor will it have any impact on its functioning. We now go live to our special correspondent, Atul Ketiwari, in Washington, D.C., to get an update on the details of the visit. Atul. Well, in terms of India-U.S. ties, which have deepened over the years, this visit means a lot. It will be the first time that Prime Minister Modi will hold in-person bilateral talks with U.S. President Joe Biden. The two leaders have earlier met virtually on three occasions. This will be an opportunity to share the views on crucial issues ranging from Afghanistan to the fight against terrorism to a free and inclusive Indo-Pacific, among others. Prime Minister Modi will also be meeting the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris. Technology, investment and enterprise will be high on the agenda as PM will be interacting with the top CEOs in Washington, D.C. Indian diaspora, too, is closely watching the visit in the United States. What is the likely agenda for talks? The developments in Afghanistan, putting end to terrorism and cyber security are among the key areas where Prime Minister Modi will hold talks with the global leaders during the visit. The Quad Vaccine Initiative, the quest for a free and inclusive Indo-Pacific and enhanced cooperation with Quad members will figure prominently in the talks with Quad leaders. His meetings with top CEOs will focus on making India initiative and investor-friendly environment in India with the ease of business. Atul, given the current situation in Afghanistan, what message PM would like to convey to the global community? The Prime Minister's visit to U.S. comes barely a month after the Taliban takeover in Afghanistan. India has called for an inclusive, stable and peaceful government in Afghanistan. Prime Minister Modi will reiterate India's stand that Afghan soil must not be used for terror activities, harboring, training or funding of terrorists. Quad leaders are having an in-person meeting this time. So can you give a sense of what is going to be the broad gamut of talks? Quad leaders had earlier met virtually in April in the wake of second wave of COVID-19 pandemic. It was decided to set up a Quad vaccine initiative under which COVID vaccines will be made in India and distributed across Asia. This initiative is likely to get a fillip following the talks amongst the Quad leaders. Thank you, Atul, for these useful inputs. This is All India Radio giving you the world news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. World Peace Day, also known as International Day of Peace, is being observed on Tuesday. The day is celebrated to strengthen the ideals of peace through observance of 24 hours of non-violence and ceasefire. This day promotes global solidarity for building a peaceful and sustainable world. The United Nations Security Council, UNSC, in February this year, unanimously passed a resolution calling for member states to support a sustained humanitarian pause to local conflicts. According to the official website of UN, the global ceasefire must continue to be honored. To ensure people caught in the conflict have access to life-saving vaccinations and treatments. This year, the theme of International Day of Peace is Recovering Better for an Equitable and Sustainable World. It focuses on how to help everyone recover better, how to build resilience and how to transform our world into a place that is more equal, more just, equitable, inclusive, sustainable and healthier. United Nations General Assembly UNGA in 1981 established third established the third Tuesday of September, the opening day of the regular sessions of the General Assembly as International Day of Peace. And now, a report from the business world. At the stock market, the Sensex at the Bombay Stock Exchange climbed 514 points, or 0.9%, to end at 59,005 today. The Nifty at the National Stock Exchange advanced 165 points, or 1%, to 17,562. At the domestic forex market, the rupee appreciated 13 paise to 73 rupees and 61 paise against the U.S. dollar. Among the global stock markets, Asian markets ended mixed, so Japan's Nikkei index dropped 2.2%, but Hong Kong's Hang Seng index rose 0.5%, and Singapore 
Singapore Straits Times Index added 0.7%. Stock markets in China and South Korea were closed for holiday. In Europe, London's FTSE 100 had risen 1.1%, France's CAC 40 had climbed 1.4%, and Germany's DAX had added 1.5% in the intraday trade. Back home, gold shed just 3 rupees to 45,258 rupees per 10 grams at the Delhi's bullion market. Global crude oil futures rose today amid tighter U.S. supplies ending days of losses as global markets remain pressured by the potential impact on China's economy of a crisis at heavily indebted property group China's Evergrande. So Brent crude advanced 68 cents to trade at $74.60 a barrel and the U.S. crude futures climbed 79 cents to $71.08 per barrel. Nishit Kumar for World News All India Radio. In IPL cricket chasing the victory target of 186, Punjab Kings were 123 for 1 in 12 overs against Rajasthan Royals at International Cricket Stadium in Dubai when reports last came in. Put into bat first, Rajasthan Royals posted 185 runs in 20 overs, losing all wickets with the help of Yashashvi Jaswa's 49 of 36 balls. Mahipal Lamrod's 43 of 17 and Evan Lewis's 36 of 21. For Punjab, Arshdeep Singh scalped 5 wickets while Mohammad Shami finished with 3. Earlier Punjab Kings won the toss and elected to bowl. Delhi Capitals will take on Sunrisers Hyderabad in Dubai on Wednesday. NDAF Union Minister of State for Defence Ajay Bhatt on Tuesday said the northeast region is like a rising sun for both India and Bangladesh. The minister was speaking at a seminar in Guwahati to commemorate the 50 years of liberation of Bangladesh. He further said, Northeast is at the gateway to Southeast Asian countries with immense opportunities. He further said, There are positive changes in the relationship between India and Bangladesh, starting from economy, agriculture, business, to inland water connectivity, and both the countries are focusing on development and progress through mutual cooperation. In a major boost to export prospects of agricultural produce, India has achieved a significant increase of 21.8% in export of agricultural and processed food products in the 2021-22 April to August in comparison to the corresponding period of 2020-21. The quick estimates have been released by the Directorate General of Commercial Intelligence and Statistics. The overall export of APDA products increased from $6,485 million in April-August 2020 to $7,902 million in April-August 2021. This rise in exports has been achieved notwithstanding COVID-19 restrictions. Commerce Ministry said the significant spike in Agri-exports is seen as a testimony of the government's commitment to increase farmers' income through giving trust on boosting exports of agricultural and processed food products of the country. The huge jump in export of agricultural and processed food products during the first five months of current fiscal is in continuation of growth in exports witnessed in the financial year 2020-21. According to WTO Street Map, with the total agri exports of $37 billion in 2019, India has ranked at ninth position in the world ranking. Now let us take a look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. The Guardian says AUKUS deal ties UK into Indo-Pacific and sends message to China. The Global Mail reports Myanmar judge rules that the post leader Aung San Suu Kyi's trial will continue. The Washington Post writes Biden at UN calls for unity in addressing the pandemic and climate change. Financial Times reports UK public debt interest payments hit August record after inflation rise. Wall Street Journal posts US stocks trade higher after global market sell-off. And Sputnik News says Australia's PM admits he knew ditching French sub-deal under AUKUS world caused disappointment. A quick look at the headlines once again. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to leave for United States on Wednesday expected to discuss radicalization, terrorism and developments in Afghanistan during bilateral talks with President Joe Biden. India and France review increasing bilateral collaboration in Indo-Pacific region, stressed on promoting stability and security in the region. India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage crosses 82 crore landmark milestone. National recovery rate stands at 97.75%. Air Canada resumes flight operations to India after long suspension due to COVID-19 pandemic and in IPL cricket, Rajasthan Royals sets a victory target of 186 runs for Punjab Kings. 
India is celebrating the 151st birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. Before we end, let us listen to his favorite bhajan, Vaishnav Jan, by artists from Armenia. And with that, we end this bulletin. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of World News.